Hey everyone, in this video we'll be setting up our printer for the first time after installing Digital Factory Direct to Film Edition. When you first launch Digital Factory Direct to Film Edition, the Create Queue Wizard dialog will open to start the process of adding an output device. Click Next. Ensure that the printer is on and connected to either your computer or your network. Click Next. Now, click the Install Printer button and select your device from the list. For this example, I'll select the Epson L1800 DTF and click OK. You will then be brought to the Device Package Search dialog. Here, I'll leave it on the Search for New Printer Packages from DVD or Cloud Server setting. The driver will be automatically downloaded and installed. After clicking Next, you'll be shown a drop-down list for the port selection. In this case, since I'm using the Epson L1800, I'll select the Epson L1800 Series USB 001 Plus port from the list. Click Next. You can now see that the driver and the default queue has been installed. If you open the queue manager, you'll see any other queues that are available for your printer. To open the queue manager, go to the queue menu and select Manage Queues. Here, you will see your available queues. You may notice your queue names are different from your installed printers. In some cases, queues will be named after the ink manufacturer that is used in your device. You can also set up additional queues with features that are common to a specific type of job. For example, if you print a lot of jobs on A3 sized paper, go to the queue manager, select your initial queue, and click on the copy queue icon in the upper left of the window. In the pop-up dialog, you can add A3 in the suffix field, then select the port for your printer, and click OK. You'll now see a queue in your list with A3 at the end. Close the queue manager and select the queue on the left. Now, set the paper option to A3 in the bottom right in queue properties. For jobs using A4 paper, go back to the queue manager, select your original printer queue, and click the copy queue icon. This time, in the suffix field, type A4, select your printer port, and click OK. Now you'll see the new queue with A4 at the end. As you did with the A3 queue, select the A4 queue and go to the settings on the bottom right and select A4 as your paper source. You can create custom queues for frequent jobs such as rasterization, stripes, and so on. Remember, rasterization softens the feel of your print on the fabric and can reduce your total ink cost. You can turn queues on and off by going back to the queue manager and checking enable to the right of the queue. For the rest of this example, we'll enable a single queue. You're now ready to start printing your jobs. If you have a USB dongle with your copy of Digital Factory and you find your queue goes into the holding state, a possible reason for this is that the computer thinks your dongle is no longer connected. Some computers may put their USB ports to sleep after a period of time, preventing communications with the security dongle. Check your settings to make sure the computer does not have the option to power off the USB ports enabled. Start by opening Device Manager from your main Windows menu. Scroll down until you see the Universal Serial Bus Controllers. Expand this and look for the USB Root Hub. Right-click and pick Select Properties. In the window that pops up, go to the Power Management tab. If you see that Allow the Computer to Turn Off This Device to Save Power option is checked, uncheck this box and click OK. This will stop the computer from turning off the USB port, allowing Digital Factory to communicate with the dongle whenever it needs. If you're using an Epson printer with Epson Status Monitor 3, you may encounter printing errors, such as the page being ejected, half printed, and then skipping to the next page, or the printer temporarily loses its connection during the printing process. This is because Epson Status Monitor 3 is pinging the printer, interfering with the communication between the printer and Digital Factory. To disable Epson Status Monitor, go to the control panel and select View Devices and Printers. Right-click on the icon for your Epson printer, select Printing Preferences, and click Extended Settings. Here you'll find a checked box for Enable Epson Status Monitor 3. Make sure this box is unchecked, and then select OK. Following these simple steps, you'll be creating vivid prints on your Direct-to-Film printer in no time. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, hit the like button, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us at any time. 
Don't forget to subscribe for more videos covering all of Catling's products.